so I'm going to uh, talk today about uh, the Chrome UI framework that we use on Windows called Views, uh, how we build uh, UI there, uh, how we test it, stuff like that, and some more people just come in. <coughs> Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully this will sort of give you a broad idea of how the, the framework works if you haven't used it before, if you find yourself having to do any uh, UI development. Uh, maybe if you've even already been using, uh, done a little bit of UI stuff, but don't think that uh, the UI framework extends beyond the status bubble. Uh, that was a joke for Glenn. Um, but anyway. Uh, the view system is basically uh, it's a, a rendering system and an event handling system for um, drawing stuff into to windows and handling events and stuff that happen in them. Um, so uh, basically you have uh, top level windows and within them you have individual controls uh, and these things are we call them views and there's a, a base class for all of them that is view in the views namespace uh, and this guy he can he can paint uh, into a canvas, uh, he can receive uh, events uh, and uh, do all kinds of things in, respond, uh, in response to those. Uh, so the Views Toolkit provides um, some basic widgets that allow you to construct UI. Uh, and all of these, all of these widgets are just subclasses of View, uh, and they override things like Paint and other stuff to do interesting things. Um, so the the View itself, all of the rendering that we we do in Views is uses Skia. Uh, and so when we paint, we paint into to, uh, Skia canvases and, and use uh, some of the, the Skia utilities to, to make things happen. Uh, and so if you've done work on uh, WebKit, uh, you might find that this is uh, somewhat similar to the way rendering works within WebKit, except much, much simpler because we don't have to uh, you know, support uh, you know, things like HTML and all of the CSS and all that kind of stuff. So basically, it's just a very simple uh, layout and rendering system. And so I'll just tell you a little bit about how this, uh, how it all sort of fits together. Um, like I said, we have this view thing that is like the individual controls uh, within a window. Um, the actual window itself at the top level, we have something that we call a widget, uh, which is on, on Windows, this is a uh, an HWIND. Uh, because in Windows, eventually you have to have an HWIND. HWIND is what Windows thinks of as the, the, the control. And it doesn't know anything else about what else we might do. Um, so we have this uh, we have this class called uh, Widget Win on Windows, uh, which basically is responsible for translating uh, operating system messages, things like WM Paint, WML button down, all that sort of thing, uh, into things that our view system understands. Uh, and so this guy has all these message handlers, um, and and he does that. Uh, and the widget is responsible for hosting a special kind of view called a root view. Maybe if I just uh, come over here and I'll just draw the structure on this whiteboard. Maybe Ian can. Uh... So Ian's just going to turn the camera around. Okay. There we go. Uh, so I've just drawn some boxes here. The outermost box is the widget win. Uh, so they would be, you know, when you're typically writing Windows code, you have your H win, and you might have child H wins and stuff like that. Here is the. Uh, the, the widget win is the H win, and inside that we have a, a single view, which is the root view. And the root view is a, a subclass of view that does some, um, basically it figures out how to uh, propagate events and all that sort of thing. Uh, so that sits there. And then within the root view, uh, there is basically the view hierarchy. And so for the Chrome browser window, there is a fairly deep hierarchy of views, uh, starting with the, the uh, frame of the window and all the way down to individual buttons and so on on the toolbar. And then dialog boxes, you end up with the same thing. Uh, you know, there's the frame of the dialog box, and then you'll end up with uh, individual buttons and text fields and whatnot uh, inside that. And so one of the most common things that you will do if you have to build some UI, you might have to uh, create a dialog box for something. Maybe you're implementing a new feature and you need to configure it or pop up something. Um, 
And so we have a special kind of widget uh, that is just for creating a, a, a top-level window or dialog box, and that's called window. And it's basically a subclass of a widget, uh, and that uh, provides you with the ability to create a top-level window and have all of the right appearance, the, the chrome blue frame and, and all sorts of other things uh, that sort of come automatically. And so you do that in your code. Basically, you, you create one of these windows, uh, and you provide it with something called a window delegate. And the window delegate is this object, this interface that you implement uh, in your object, and you get notified of things like the window is closing, and you also get to configure the window through your implementation of this interface. Um, things like uh, you, whether or not you can be resized or maximized, <coughs> and things like that. Um, so uh, by, by doing that, you basically you tell the window how it should look when it gets created, and also uh, you can respond to, to events that come from the window through your window delegate. And typically the way this works is um, when, you, when you build a dialog box, you'll create a view uh, that is the contents of your dialog box, and that will actually be the thing that sits in here somewhere. Um, and uh, your, your view, that your contents view, is actually your, in most cases in the Chrome code, ends up being the window delegate, uh, and that is able to respond to the, you know, closing things, and it can go and configure, uh, it can go and, uh, you know, do things, you know, when the window is closed, maybe you want to perform an action or something like that, or scrape the state out of any text boxes that you have, and, and uh, things like that. Uh, for a, specifically for a dialog box, we have some sugar on top of a uh, window delegate called dialog delegate that supports being able to create dialog boxes that have OK cancel buttons and such. Uh, and so that makes that sort of thing a little bit easier. Uh, all this, by the way, all this code, I didn't mention this before, I probably should have, is in the Chrome source under uh, source slash Chrome slash views. Uh, and there's some subdirectories under there that kind of organize this into, into, uh, into related <coughs> sections. So some of the stuff that I was just talking about, window, window delegate, et cetera, is under view slash window. Uh, and there's uh, you know, a lot of the other uh, things around there. And there's a controls directory as well where you can find um, the individual uh, controls that you can use, buttons, labels, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I'll just um, mention a couple of the controls. I mean, most of them will make sense if you've ever done any kind of UI programming with any framework. Um, you know, most of them make sense. We have a couple of interesting ones. Uh, one is called HWIND view. Sometimes you need to uh, wrap a native Windows uh, control. A Sometimes you just have an HWIND, um, and you need to... Uh, to, to put that into your view hierarchy somewhere. And the thing is, is that because an HWIND isn't a Chrome view, uh, it is an HWIND, uh, it's not going to get resized automatically per the layout rules that you uh, specify in your view hierarchy. So uh, what we have is a control called um, uh, HWIND view that basically allows you to take any HWIND that you might have. Say you have a, a, I'll just use one example of a renderer or some other control that you might have where you just have the HWIND of it. You can create an HWIND view and attach the HWIND to it. And from then on, any time the HWIND view gets resized, it'll automatically size uh, the HWIND with it. So that means that you can uh, basically have your HWIND, your individual native HWINDs take part uh, in the window layout. Uh, and we have some other ones like uh, HWIN HTML view, which is a uh, specialization of HWIN view that allows you to specifically uh, embed a uh, web rendering area uh, within your view hierarchy. Now, I've just talked a little bit about layout, and that's something that's uh, kind of interesting. A lot of the times when you're building a dialog box, you might use one of the, you might use the existing layout manager like Grid Layout, which allows you to specify sort of a nicely lined up uh, uh, arrangement of controls if you're putting something together like that. And there's some header files around that define, you know, nicely, a nice aesthetic spacing between controls and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes you might be doing something more specific, more custom, things like the uh, top level browser window, for instance, is not using a grid layout because everything is very specific to the individual case. In this case, for your view method, you just override layout. Uh, and then you get to specify each child's bounds uh, when your layout method is called. Layout is call, called automatically uh, by the framework whenever the top level widget is resized. Uh, basically, that goes down through the hierarchy calling uh, layout. And then each, basically, each child uh, view, uh, sorry, each, each view has layout called, and then it goes and sizes its children. And when, each, when the children's bounds change, it calls layout, and then it just sort of propagates like that. 
Um, so part of that, there's another method that you might override sometimes called uh, get preferred size. Um, and the preferred size of your widget is basically the size that you want your, your view to be when it's laid out. So you might say that your, your view wants to be, you know, 20 by 30, and then when, it's, when uh, that view is parent, it's called, it might call get preferred size, and then size that and position it, uh, and stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's something else that you might find uh, you do. Uh, I just figured I'd, I'd talk briefly about um, uh, the construction of the top level window as well. Sometimes you see some of these things in your call stack. Uh, it might be interesting to know what they are. Like I said before, and I drew my diagram over here, um, the top level widget, widget win window uh, is the container, uh, the, the native hwin that contains the view hierarchy. Top level view is a root view. Uh, but then inside that, in every single case uh, these days, uh, the only child of the root view is something called a non-client view. Uh, and this kind of maps to the Windows concept of uh, client and non-client rendering. Uh, on Windows, when you have a, a non-client area, this is the area that is the frame of the window, the title bar, the sizing borders, stuff like that. And then inside that, you have a client area, uh, which is the <coughs> contents of the window. Uh, and so we've kind of replicated that here uh, in the view system. Uh, the non-client view contains the client view, and also contains a uh, what we call a frame view, which actually renders the um, the blue border around the, the window. Um, and so and that can do all of the specific uh, functionality for that. And then the client view is the thing that actually contains the content. So I sort of simplified this a bit before when I was talking about dialog boxes and I said that you'd make a contents view for your that had the controls of your dialog box and that would go into the window. Um, that actually goes inside a client view. You don't actually get to see any of this. It's all hidden behind the, the call to create Chrome window that you make. Uh, but the, the client view is the thing that basically, uh, in the case of a dialog box, the client view provides the OK and cancel buttons uh, and stuff like that. And uh, you may find that uh, you, know, you find yourself in there sometimes if you're trying to figure something out. Um, so just a, a general uh, high-level comment about the way that the front end is, has been uh, developed. Uh, primarily because all the stuff I've talked about so far is related to, to UI that we've been building on Windows. Uh, but we are a, a, a cross-platform project. Uh, and so there is a lot of logic that is uh, shared uh, between platforms. Uh, and you'll find that there are a lot of objects within the browser front end uh, that are um, uh, that are actually cross-platform, things like browser, tab contents, stuff like that. And so we didn't want to uh, tie them too closely together with our Windows implementation on the front end, so we used the sort of standard uh, approach for this in model view controller uh, layout, where um, we consider some of the state objects like uh, browser, tab contents, et cetera, to be uh, the state, the model in this case. And then the, the, all of the, the Chrome view stuff, uh, that's kind of the, uh, that's, that's sort of the view controller uh, side of things. And what this means is that we can separate out this model and we can actually use that on Mac and Linux, which is what we're doing. And also because there isn't this sort of tight coupling of that to a particular UI state, it's also a lot easier to write unit tests for uh, the model. Uh, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Actually, I'll get to that right now. Um, so because the, uh, uh, like I said, because it's, it, it's separated it out, it's been possible to write more unit tests. Uh, sometimes you have a relatively simple state object uh, and you can just write a regular unit test for it uh, using the existing uh, unit test framework and, and, and get that to work. Sometimes you want to do something a little bit more complicated and you want to test functionality that goes out and, and, and loads pages uh, you know, off a test, test server and stuff like that. So we have a thing called uh, in-process browser tests that basically, allow, that basically spins up a, a message loop uh, and allows you to simulate running the actual browser. Uh, but in a unit test. And these are pretty easy to write. We're still getting some of the kinks worked out of the system, but they're still pretty easy to write and run in isolation. And finally, we have uh, UI tests, which are um, much higher level, uh, very uh, deep sort of tests that basically run the whole browser uh, in a separate process. Basically, they run the browser as a user would, and it sends commands to it through an automation API. I would recommend if you're writing new features to write most stuff uh, as unit tests or in-process browser tests because these are the easiest to debug. Um, but if you want to get a, uh, if you want something to run uh, on on Chromebot or any of these other things, you need to write uh, UI tests uh, and, and automated UI tests. So uh, that's sort of a brief summary of the uh, framework. 